This is lecture three, layout planning models and design algorithms. This is the first part of this lecture. And here are the objectives for the course, right? So we have mentioned that every time we start a new lecture, we want to refer back to these objectives. And, and there's a couple of them that are going to be part of the, of the discussion to them today. Um, for example, development understanding of the principles of layout and material handling system to practice the design of facilities. Um, learn formulation models and analytical procedures for the study of facilities layout planning. And also be able to design layouts incorporating product process and personal requirements. So this is the agenda for today. Uh, we're going to look at multiple things, uh, including ba basic layout types, layout procedures, and algorithms approaches for the planning of the layout of a And these are the learning objectives for today. Uh, understand the interactions between layout planning models and design algorithms as they relate to facilities planning. So as an introduction, we we want to uh, discuss the generation of layout alternatives, which is a critical step in the facilities planning process because the layout selected will serve to establish the physical relationship between activities. Most facility layouts can be viewed at two levels. The block layout, which shows the location, shape, and size of each planning department, and the detail layout, which shows the exact location of all equipment, workbenches, and storage areas within the department. Our focus in this uh, course is going to be on, on quantitative methods for developing and evaluating alternative block layouts. So that uh, first bullet. So what are the different basic layout types? In lecture 2 would identify four types of planning departments. First one, the fixed material location departments. The second one, the production line departments. The third one, the product family departments. And the fourth one, the process department. Identifying the right number and type of departments that are going to be used to populate the layout is a key step in the facilities planning must perform first. So we need to understand um, what type of departments and the number of departments that we, we are going to need in order to design our facility. Let's talk about some layout procedures. Different procedures have been developed to aid the facilities planning in developing layout alternatives. They can be classified in two main categories. The first one is the construction type and the second one is the improvement type. In the construction type, layout methods basically involve developing a new layout from scratch. So let's say you're building a new facility, there's nothing inside the facility, so you're constructing a new layout. And then the improvement procedures, on the other hand, generate layout alternatives by seeking improvement in an existing layout. Um, now I'm going to, uh, I just want to show that there are, for different companies, there are different things that are considered when um, planning for the layouts. And in this slide, I'm showing for Apple, the company, um, what is the procedure that they follow. So you see there's a lot of information here. I'm not going to talk about each one of them. But at the beginning, they're collecting some data, uh, data regarding the, the type of information, the type of product that is going to be placed in this facility. And then they're starting, they start to consider the material flow pattern, the material handling, the type of equipment that is going to be required, the number of working stations, um, and so on. This is the different 
plan layout procedure. This is called the REAPS play plan layout procedure. And it's more, it's less detailed than the, uh, the one considered by Apple. Uh, in this one, we analyze the product or products to be processed. So basically, it's similar to what they do in Apple's uh, plan, in which you collect data and also decide what products are going to be processed. And then based on that, we determine the process required to manufacture the product. We prepare some of the um, um, figures in diagrams that we have mentioned. So to plan, layout planning charts. Then we determine the workstations that are going to be needed. They analyze the storage area requirements. And based on that, we establish the minimum aisle width. We also have to consider what type of space is going to be used for offices. Um, consider personal facilities and services, survey plan services, and then provide also space for future expansion. Uh, a layout planning chart is the most important single phase of the entire layout process, and it incorporates the following. Uh, the flow process, including operations, transportation, storage, and inspection, standard time for each operation, the machine selection and balance, and the material handling equipment. And here's an example of a layout planning chart. Um, so this chart is split in two areas. At the top, we have information about, or is a summary of the information. And we have some uh, shapes that are used to identify the, the type of uh, action that is being performed. So as you can see, uh, circles represent operations. So these are the, the shapes that I'm mentioning, operations, transport, inspection, and delays, and storage. And the, the information that is to the right of, that, uh, of those shapes is basically a summary after you perform the detail uh, analysis, which is uh, described at the bottom of the chart. So you see uh, we have multiple columns in the first column to the, to the left. We have the steps, and then each step details um, the, the actions that are going to be performed. We have a method, um, if it's going to be a manual activity or not. And then we have a, the next five columns basically show uh, per column a, a shape. And what this does is it, it helps you map the activities in such a way that you know whether you're starting with storage, transport, then a couple of operations, and then you go back to transportation, inspection, and finally transportation again. Um, so this helps you see um, what are the actions that are being performed to uh, in the process, and that information can help you plan for the space. Um, we have information about how, how how much distance uh, needs to be traveled, uh, the time in seconds that each action is going to be uh, taking, and then finally the cost per unit. So this is called a layout planning chart. Um, a very uh, well used uh, procedure for planning for layouts in the facility is called the Systematic Layout Planning, SLP procedure. And the Systematic Layout Planning methodology was developed by Richard Mother. Uh, the framework is use activity relationship diagram as a foundation activity. Okay, so we talk about those activity relationships. Remember those diagrams that looks like a triangle so this is the foundation of, of this procedure for planning. And in this slide, I can show you a flowchart of 
the activities that are performed in order to get to multiple layout alternatives. So we start at the top with the input of an activities, input data and activities, and then we transition to the flow of materials. And also, we map the activity relationships. From there, we can develop a relationship diagram that can help us plan for the space requirements and the space available. From there, we develop a space relationship diagram, which can take, take us to um, the develop of layout alternatives after considering the modifying considerations and practical limitations of the alternatives that are presented. And we come up with multiple activities or multiple alternatives at this step. So we have another step here for the evaluation of those alternatives and for the decision-making process in terms of which alternative is the best. Based on the input data and an understanding of the roles and relationship between activities, a material flow analysis, a prompt-to chart, and an activity relation analysis with an activity relationship chart are performed. Okay, so these are all steps of the systematic layout planning procedure. So we start with, um, as I mentioned, with a prompt to chart and also an activity relationship chart. So in this slide, I'm showing you an activity relationship chart for a specific um, plant. This, again, what you are going to see here is a list of departments, right? And then we have some information on this side that is being um, defined according to this code, right? The reason and the closeness and why is, are they absolutely necessarily important and so on. So those values are presented in this side of the chart and those allow us to move to the next part which is a relationship diagram. So in the relationship diagram what we are trying to do is position activities uh, spatially so we are trying to take those activities or those departments um, into a space, right? So that's what is represented here. So the numbers and the notes are representing the departments. And then we have a different, uh, different type of connections here. You see that those dotted uh, lines here, those are representing the strength or the importance between the connection of this department. Um, the stronger the type of line you are presenting, the stronger is the relationship or the closeness or, or the importance of the closeness between those two departments is, is more relevant as you use more strong lines. Um, and their proximities are used to reflect the relationship between a part of between a pair of activities. So there are uh, different ways of defining these connections between these departments. Um, here I'm showing some some ways of defining the the arcs of those of, of the those diagrams. Um, so remember, we, we define this coding, and the code is representing this um, closeness in terms of the importance. And we can use different ways of coding, like for instance, the line code is presented here. So four lines represent that this relationship or closeness is absolutely necessary. Um, when there is no line, it's unimportant. And when this type of line is used, it, we mean that it's, a, on, it's not this, a, we want to keep those departments apart. We don't want them close. Okay, and then there's some numerical values here in terms of the weights of the relationships. So here's a 
the relationship diagram, an example. Um, so the number of lines here represent paths required to be taken into transactions between the departments. The more lines, the more interaction between departments. So for example, the relationship between two and five represents that there's a lot of interaction between departments two and five. This line is representing that, that those two departments cannot be close together. Uh, so the relationship diagram position activities is spatially. Uh, proximities are typically used to re reflect the relationship between pairs of activities. Um, and as you can see in this diagram, we are no longer using the circles to represent the departments. Now we are using those boxes. This is important because, you know, when you, you, you are planning for a layout, you are using a given shape. So now after we arrange or we, we, we make this connection, these relationships using these uh, lines, we want to start moving the department uh, to the base location within the space that is given for the facility. So for instance, here we are using the actual uh, dimension for each department. So you see now we have a better idea not only about the strength of the relationship between departments but also in terms of the size. So if you are given an area like this, we know that we can fit the, the departments in the way that we have arranged them now. But if you have a limited space, let's say we have a layout with a shape like this, then we're going to have to move those departments to be accommodated within that size and that shape. Okay, so the current uh, arrangement that you have uh, presented in this slide, what we have presented in this slide, would not be a good fit for the given area. Okay, so space relationship diagram again is trying to show the size now and the connection between or the relationship between each one of the departments. The space relationship diagram involves the determination of the amount of space to be assigned to each activity. So now we transition from the notes um, to the boxes and the actual size of those departments. And based on the modifying considerations and practical limitations, a number of layout alternatives are developed and evaluated. The preferred alternative is then identified and recommended. So as you can see now, we have three possible options. Um, so if you are given a, a specific shape, you see the departments are arranged accordingly, uh, according to a given space. And then we are going to use these uh, weights. Right? You remember here in this slide, we are given weight to each one of the uh, coding lines. So using those weights and the positioning of the of the department, we can see whether or not we are satisfying the closeness and whether or not we are accounting for those requirements. And if we, if we do, we can add that to our total uh, performance. If not, we can't. So the idea is that using this multiple alternative, we can come up with a way to evaluate each different layout and decide for the one that is providing the most benefit. So I have um, some other examples here. Let me show you. I'm opening this to make sure that the recording is, is moving. Okay, so this is uh, some extra examples of case problems that are using the SLP methodology. This is posted as part of your lecture materials. So if you go to your lecture materials 
P3 part one, there's a, a, there's a new file with examples. Um, so the idea here is that you can relate what we are explaining to multiple examples. So we have um, a very interesting example here that is called the caveman layout. And the idea here is the this is a very simple case of making a layout by logical sequence for a caveman, say 25,000 years ago. Um, so we're going to be using some of the tools that we just discussed, right? So they are here. So we start with um, the activity relationships, right? And we, we map those. From there, we can add some extra information about the amount and kind and shape in terms of the size of each uh, department. And you see here we have a reason, meaning that uh, reasons of why, um, in, in terms of stating the importance of the relationship. We are also given uh, a square paper to shape the layout. And we have a table here to evaluate the different alternatives, which is table five. And then finally, the number six is the final layout that we, that we obtain. So going back here, um, remember the coding for the activity relationship, A, A E I O U X. But you have to come up with your own reasoning here. So we are going to be using the, the coding A I O U X, but we have to provide a reason, or you have to write down a reason for, um, for explaining whether or not the, the relationships are. Uh, absolutely necessary, especially important, important, ordinary, unimportant, or not decidable. Okay, so let me take you to the actual solution. So here's the relationship diagram using, um, so we start mapping, right, based on, on the information given. So you're, you're using the line coding again to denote the importance between the connection in the departments. Okay, so let's say this is our final relationship diagram. And this is the available space in the cave. So let's go. I'm showing you the different alternatives once you solve the problem, but um, it take you to the actual solution. Okay, so here we go. So again, we have five departments: fireplace, lead, property storage, entrance, and work area. And the amount that is listed in the first column is basically the area for each one of the departments. And inside the activity relationship diagram, we have the codes. So, for instance, between fireplace and sleep, there's a, it's a zero, an O, um, and a number one. The, the reasoning, so the solution has a reason. One means that we want to keep warm, two, ventilation, three, protection, four, convenience, and five, light. Um, so we are using the closeness rating from A I E O U X, and also we are using the reasons that are listed at the bottom of the activity relationship to fill out our activity relationships. Um, and we have the shape on the last column of number two. From there, we are developing this uh, relationship diagram. Right, so that's number three. And using that information, we are coming up with some design alternatives, which is what we're seeing for. As you can see from the relationship diagram, you want to keep departments two and four away, apart. So that's what you're seeing here in the layout. 
Also, we want to keep 3 and 4 away. So that's what you're seeing also in the layout in the space relationship diagram. Um, um, we want 1 and 4 to be close to each other, so that's why 1 and 4 are close. And 1 and 2 can be close. And 1 to 5 is also close. So we are basically meeting that um, those requirements. Number five is showing the evaluation of different alternatives. It looks like for this case there were two alternatives, A and B. So they're using the weight established for the relationship and then we are using those weights to come up with a total score. And based on that we can decide whether A or B, a or B is the better alternative. In this case the total were 80 and 46. So 80 looks like a better alternative a is a better alternative, so that's why um, we end up with the layout that is shown uh, in number six. So, um, so there are a couple of extra examples here that you can look at. Uh, some of them are more detailed than the others, but the idea is the same. It's showing the use of the SLP methodology to design um, or to come up with some design uh, uh, layout for your facility. So I encourage you to look at the other examples um, just to for your for practical purposes. You're going to be doing some of this in your um, in your homework, in one of your homeworks, I think homework number three. So the idea again is that you follow the the sequence in terms of building these diagrams and then you present a list of alternatives or one alternative for a layout for a specific uh, facility. Okay, so going back to the lecture. Now we are going to talk about algorithms approaches. So we just discussed the HLP procedure. Okay. So by the end, we're going to have different alternative block layouts, and we are going to choose the best one based on um, the weight of the relationship and how well we are satisfying those relationships in our final layout. Algorithm approaches other ways to um, develop layout alternatives are, are these algorithms that we are going to discuss next. The layout procedures presented in the previous sections provide a framework to construct or improve a layout, but they do not provide a formal procedure or algorithm for some of the critical steps associated with layout design and evaluation. The models and algorithms we present in this section provide us with objective criteria to facilitate the evaluation of various layout alternatives that emerge in the process. So most layout algorithms can be classified according to the type of input data they require, um, and that includes qualitative flow data, such as relationship charts, uh, quantitative flow data, such as flow matrix expressed as a from to chart, and some algorithms accept both relationship charts and from to charts. Layout algorithms can also be classified according to their objective functions. And if you are familiar with op operation research, the objective function is what denotes how the decision in terms of selecting the best alternative is going to be made. So, for example, uh, an objective function can be minimize the cost. So, when you're using that as your objective function, basically what you're trying to do is to make a decision that is minimizing the cost. But you can have another performance uh, or objective function that could be maximize your profit. So instead of just looking at the cost, you're looking at the difference between the income and the, the cost. 
So that's another performance or objective function that you can use. So again, you can be looking at things as minimizing the time, the distance. So what is important here is that once you commit to that objective function, that's what's going to be guiding your decision. Okay, so layout algorithms can be also classified according to the objective function that you're going to perform or you're going to use. For example, minimizing the sum of flows time distances or maximizing the adjacency score. So there, this is a list of algorithm approaches that um, are, are being used in, in facilities planning. And for the purpose of this class, we're going to be focusing on those that are highlighted in red. Uh, but the list includes pairwise exchange method, the graph based method, craft, m craft, block plan, um, mixed integer programming, logic, and multiple. So again, we're going to be focusing on the ones highlighted in red. The graph based method, the, the graph based method is a construction type al layout algorithm. Again, you, that, what that means is that you're going to start from scratch uh, in terms of building the, the facility layout. There's nothing there. You're starting with an empty facility and you're going to be building a new layout. And uses the adjacency base objective. And some of the things uh, that are considered in this graph based method include the adjacency score does not account for distance, nor does it account for relationships other than those between adjacent, adjacent departments. Dimensional specifications of department are not considered. The length of common boundaries between adjacent departments are also not considered. The arcs do not intersect. This property of graphs is called planarity. And the score is very sensitive to the assignment of numerical weights in the relationship chart. Okay, so this algorithm approach is called the graph-based method. And what it does is it, it tries to um, specify the location of departments, but there are some limitations in terms of not considering the size and distances between departments. So let's look at one uh, example. So this is the graph-based method. Consider a, a company that wants to develop a layout for its new five departments of equal size. So in this case, we have a, a company that is trying to come up with a facility layout. And we are assuming that all the departments or these new five departments are of equal size. So we start with the relationship chart. Um, and we can see the that those numbers uh, in terms of the the relationship between departments, department one through three, four, five. Okay. And from there we can develop a relationship diagram. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to develop uh, a network uh, based on these numbers. And I'm going to be using nodes to represent the departments. So I have one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, so I can put some marks according to the relationship between departments. So from one to two, there's a nine. From uh, one to three, there's an eight. From one to five, there's a zero. And from one to four, there's a ten. Um, what else? So we have those four, copper. So from two to three, Two to three, there's twelve. Um, from two to four, 
this 13 and from 2 to 5 is 7 and then from 3 to 4 is 20 and from 3 to 5 is 0 and from 4 to 5 is 2 Okay, so this is my relationship diagram. I consider all the possible lengths between departments. And we move to the actual procedure of the graph, ba graph based method. Okay, so step one from the relationship chart, select a department pair with the largest weight. In this case, that department is going to be department three and four, which is here has a weight of 20. Now select the third department to enter. The third department is selected based on the sum of the weights with respect to departments 3 and 4. Okay, so we know 3 and 4 has the largest weight. Okay, so 3 and 4 are, go are going to be located say here it has 20 now we we start adding other departments right so um, and we are going to be considering how the rest of the departments or the weights of the of the other departments uh, measure against the two departments that we already selected so the rest of the departments are one two and 5. And the weight between 1 and 3 for the weight is 8 and between 1 and 4 is 10. Just one second. Now we look for the weights um, of 2 with respect to 3 and 4. And those values are 12 and 13. And then values or the weights from 5 with respect to 3 and 4, those are 0 and 2. So what we're going to do next is to find the total of the weights. So this is 18 this is 25 and this is 2 so out of the 3 this is the highest score which is the best which means that we're going to add another um, link to this network which is 2 and the values are from 3 to 2, 12 and this is 13 so the department is chosen with the value of 25. Okay, so on the next slide we're going to continue with this process. So we're going to pick the four department to enter by evaluating the value of adding one of the unassigned departments represented by a node on a face of the graph. So at this point we still have 1 and 5 that haven't been assigned. So we are going to look at their relationship with respect to 2, 3, and 4. So we have 1 and 5. And the values are 9, 8, 10. And this is 7, 0, and 2. So the total is 27, 4, 1, and 9, 4, 5. So this is the best. So department 1 is chosen with a value 
of 27. So we're going to um, add department 1 to the network. So we have 2, 3, and 4 already. And I'm going to place 1 in between. And the network is going to be 12, 13, 20, and then these parts, 8, 9, and 10. So we still have one department. Determine on which phase to insert the last department. That's the last step. So for that we have 5 and the weights with respect to the other departments which are 1, 2, 3, and 4. So this is 0, 7, 0, 2. So if you look at the phases of this um, network, let's, let, let's list them. So we have phases and the total. So we have one, two, and three. So we have that little triangle form here. We have another phase which is one, two, and four, and we have another phase which is one, three, and four. So one, two, and four. We have one, three and four and we have two three and four two three and four is the uh, the triangle on the outside so um, if you look at the values for this phase so one two three we have two in it and the value is seven for 1 is 0 and for 3 is 0, so the total is 7. For 1, 2, and 4, we have value of 7 and 2, so the total is 9. Um, for 1, 3, 4, we have the value of 2. And for 2, 3, 4, we have the value of 9. So these two are the best. And they're tied. So you can choose either one to be added or to be placed to place this uh, note 5 um, so I'm gonna use this face so the way this is going to look like is the following so we have this outside triangle 3 2 and 4 and then we are going to connect these two, which is 12. We also have 1, and we have 5. So we have 9 here. We have 8. From here to here, we have 20. And from here to here, we have 10. From 1 to 5, we have 0. We have also, sorry. We have this connection here, 7, and this connection here, 13, and this is 2. Okay, so as you can see, we enter 5 in that phase uh, 1, 2, 4 that I'm going to show now. That phase is these. Um, one, two, four is this phase that we uh, chose, which on the previous was this area. So we inserted the um, the node inside that phase, and that is the last node. So using this uh, network, now we can construct a corresponding block layout if we have the dimensions for each department. So, uh, as you can see here, if you gather the dimensions, we can somehow 
or the areas we can um, develop the the size and basically the size is the the weight um, so here's where we end up with this um, corresponding block layout okay so that's all I have for this first part the next or the second part of this lecture will follow with the next video.